Hola, welcome to our Spanish lesson for this week. First of all, you're going to need a bit of equipment to help you with the learning today. You're going to need a piece of paper to write on and a pen or a pencil to write with. So if you don't have those in front of you already, just pause the video, go and get them, and then come back and press play when you're ready to continue. Now, first of all, let's just do a little bit of a recap of things that we already know. So let's do a recap, first of all, of places in town. So pictures along here, you've got six towns. Okay, six um, collections of places, lettered A, B, C, D, E, F. And underneath, you've got five sentences. And those sentences are all describing one of the towns pictured. All you need to do is to read the sentences and work out which of the towns are being described. You're going to be matching up the numbers of the sentences with the letters of the towns. Now, just to make it a bit more tricky, you might notice that there are six towns, but only five sentences. So there's going to be one that you don't use. So pause the video, match up the letters and the numbers by reading the sentences carefully, and then press play when you're ready to continue. So have you matched up the letters and the numbers? Are you ready to see the answers? Let's see if you were right. There we are. So number one, you've got plaza, iglesia and parque, which makes it answer B. Then number two, you have estación, parque and río, which would make it E. Number three, museo, hospital, iglesia. So that's C. Number four, we've got museo, hospital and río. So that's going to be answer A. And sentence number five, you should have spotted mercado, plaza and colegio. So that makes it answer F. Have you spotted which town we didn't use? That's right, we didn't use D, which is colegio, estación and mercado. Good, let's continue. So we've also been working on spotting infinitives and we have some infinitives here. Remember that in English, infinitive verbs always start with to, like to hop, to skip, to jump. And in Spanish, infinitives always end with AR, ER or IR, no other endings. Now, in the box that you can see here, there are 18 different infinitives. What I would like you to do is to pause the video and see if you can find and write down the 18 infinitives. So pause the video, have a go at finding the 18 infinitives and press play when you're ready to check. So are you ready to check the 18 infinitives? They are here. So we have aprender, jugar, tomar, empezar, encontrar, terminar, elegir, dar, vender, tener, comprender, ser, mirar, hacer, hablar, preferir, odiar, and ir. Have you noticed how the one at the bottom there is a tiny little infinitive? It's an ending and a verb all in one go. And we're going to be seeing a lot more of that one later on. It means to go. So well done, however many infinitives you found. So here's what we're going to be doing in the main part of our lesson today. We're going to be learning how to say and understand 10 forms of transport. That's our new learning for today. And we're going to use those to help us to say where in town I go and how I get there. So we're going to be using our places for where you go and the transports for how you get there. So here are our transports. There's 10 of them. You've got the pictures and the words there. Let's have a go at saying these new transports. Escuchad y repetid. En tren. En tren. En cohete. En cohete. A pie. A pie. En moto. En moto. En avión. 
En avión. En autobús. En autobús. En barco. En barco. A caballo. A caballo. En coche. En coche. En bicicleta. En bicicleta. There we are. There's our ten transports. Now, do you think you know what any of these transports mean? Now, you'll notice that they don't start with un or una, the a or an word. So it's not a train, a bus and so on, but it's the forms of transport. So let's just run through and make sure we know what they all mean. So en tren, if you go some, somewhere with this form of transport, you would say by train. So en tren by train. So what do you think en cohete is? That's right, by rocket, very common form of transport, I'm sure you'll agree. A pie, a pie. This one's a little bit different in English. What would we say there? It's on foot. If you travel a pie, you travel on foot. The next one, en moto, is by motorbike. Moto is short for motocicleta, for motorcycle. And the next one, en avión. What would that one be? By plane, by aeroplane. Have you spotted that avión is like the words aviator and aviation, all to do with planes in English? What about en autobús? What would that one be? Yep, by bus. And en barco. What would that be in English? By boat. What about a caballo? A caballo. Right? On horseback is probably the best in English. En coche. What about en coche? Right? By car. And finally, en bicicleta. En bicicleta is by bike. Sometimes you can short bicicleta to bici for bike. Okay? So, there's our 10 transports. Eight of them begin with N. Two of them, these two here, begin with A. So we've got A pie and A caballo. Looking at the pictures, can you work out a good way of helping you to remember which two start with A and not N? Have you found a way of remembering? So A pie and A caballo both involve feet and no engines or wheels or anything like that. So a pie, a caballo are different to all the others which start with N. They start with A and they're to do with uh, human power or animal power, if you like. So let's practice the words one more time. Escuchad y repetid. En tren. En tren. En cohete. En cohete. A pie. A pie. En moto. En moto. En avión. En avión. En autobús. En autobús. En barco. En barco. A caballo. A caballo. En coche. En coche. En bicicleta. En bicicleta. So there's our ten transports that we're now going to be using and putting into our sentences. So to help us to practice them a little bit more, have a look at the sentences that we have on the screen here. All you need to do is to point to the correct one. So boy en coche, would that be picture A or picture B? Point to the one you think it is. 
boy en coche. Yep, it's that one. Then the second one, boy en barco. Boy en barco. Which one is that going to be? A or B? That's right, it's A, isn't it? Let's make it a bit more tricky. You've got three to choose from this time. The first one says, boy en avión. Boy en avión. Will it be A, B or C? Point to the right one. You've got it. It's picture B. And the last one here, you've got three again to choose from. Boy en bici. Boy en bici. Is it A, B or C? Point to the correct picture. That's right. It's picture A. Well done. So here's our uh, 10 forms of transport again. What I would like you to do is to pause the video and then copy those 10 forms of transport onto your piece of paper. And you can either put the English in or you can draw the pictures. That's up to you as long as you know what each of them means. So pause the video, make your list of the 10 transports to help you later on, and then press play when you're happy to start again. So here are some sentences which all have the uh, transports in. They are the underlined bits, but strangely, they don't look like the forms of transport that you have just written down because they are anagrams. They are all mixed up. What you need to do, pause the video, copy out the sentence. But when you get to the underlined bit, you need to work out which transport word it is, unmix it to spell it correctly. All 10 of them are there. Make sure you get accents on in the right place where they need to be. So pause the video, copy down the sentence, unmix the transport word, and then press play when you want to see the answers. OK, have you copied down the sentences and have you unmixed all those transport words? Do you know which one is which? Let's have a look and see if you are right. Here's the answers. So just press pause and mark your own work. Well done. Did you work them all out? So you can see some sentences here that are really good examples of the ones that we're going to put together. They all say where you're going to and they all say how you are getting there. Let's have a look at that in more detail. So here's a sentence. It says, Voy al banco en autobús. Voy al banco en autobús. Any ideas what that sentence means? We haven't seen the word boy before, but I'll tell you that voy means I go. Can you work out what the rest is then? Voy al banco en autobús. You think you've got it? Yeah. I go to the bank by bus. I go to the bank by bus. Let's just have a closer look at that word al, the second word there. This little word al is actually two words squished together. It's a squishing together of a, which means two, and el, which means the. Now, just like the Play-Doh that you play with the most changes colour the most, they all get mixed together, don't they? And they go a sort of funny brown colour. Well, the words that you use most in language, they change the most. And these words have changed from being used a lot over hundreds of years. So a and l have gradually got squished together and they've made this new word al. So al means to the, and it used to be a and l separately. So Voy al banco en autobús means I go to the bank by bus. Let's have a look at some more, see if you can work out what goes in the gaps. So here's another sentence. What's going to go into the gap there, do you think? It's a place that we know already. That's it. Al hospital. I go to the hospital by bus. And what about this one? What's going to go in this gap? Have you worked it out? Voy al parque en autobús. I go to the park by bus. Do you think you're getting the hang of it? 
How about this one then? What's going to go into that gap, do you think? Let's see. Voy a la cafeteria en autobús. Well, hang on a minute. That's different to all the others. Why do you think this one says a la when all the others said al? What's the difference here? You've got it. This is a feminine place, so we need to say to the in a different way. Let's just have a little look more closely at that. So we know that masculine nouns, if we want to say a or an, we put un in front. If we want to say the, then they need el. And we've already seen that to the is al, which is a and el squished together. For feminine ones, they always have something different, don't they? Feminine for a and an is una. If you want to say the when it's feminine, you need la. And then to the is a la. Those two words haven't got squished together. They've stayed as two separate words. So al is masculine. A la is feminine. Okay. Al is masculine. A la is feminine. And they both mean to the. You have to be careful when you're writing these because sometimes the L starts to wander and go with the wrong A. Okay, so al to the masculine, a la is to the when it's feminine. Let's have a look at one more example. What's going to go into this gap? Have you got a masculine one or a feminine one here? Can you remember? It's feminine, isn't it? So this one will be a la estación, to the station, a la estación. So if you're going to say where you're going to, you need to always remember whether your place is masculine or feminine. Usually, you'll be able to tell with the o on the end for masculine, a on the end for feminine, or you can look for the un for masculine or una for feminine to tell you which group they fall into. So, just to recap, if you're going to a masculine place, boy al, for example, parque. If you're going to a feminine place, boy a la, for example, Estación, and then you just put your transport on the end, that never changes. So here is a sentence builder that's going to help us to make some sentences saying where you're going to and how you're getting there. And as long as you follow the arrows, you aren't going to make a mistake. You're going to make sure that your sentence is grammatically correct. So we always start on the left hand side and we work our way over to the right hand side there, following the arrows to ensure we get the right words in the right place. So <clears throat> here's an example. Have a look at the green boxes there. I could say voy al cine en coche. Voy al cine en coche. Can you work out what that sentence would be in English? Voy al cine en coche. Have you got it? I go to the cinema by car. I go to the cinema by car. And I followed the arrows so I know that that sentence is going to be correct. If you go somewhere the arrows don't take you, it's not going to be a correct sentence. So what I would like you to do is to use this sentence builder to write 10 sentences saying where you are going and how you are getting there. You choose which places, you choose which transports. You can use them more than once if you like. So pause the video, write 10 sentences to say where you are going and how you're getting there, and then press play when you're ready to continue. So how have you done with those 10 sentences? Do they all start with boy? Do they all have al or ala in the right place? And you haven't written al, a, it says a. La for the feminine places. And have they all got a transport on the end? Fantastic. So well done. You've worked hard there today. We've done lots of different things. And we've started something completely new, which is the transports, and then putting that into our sentences with, with the places in town. Well done. Muy bien. Buen trabajo. Adios. And I'll see you for our next lesson.